In this video, I'm going to be creating two new behavior designer tasks and one new behavior designer variable. This video is going to be following the documentation that's available online, writing a new conditional task and writing a new action task. So the scene that I've created has a capsule in the very center. At the bottom of the capsule is a little arrow so that you can see which way it's facing. Surrounding the capsule are four spheres. These spheres are going to be animating back and forth. What I want to do is create a behavior tree that will be attached to the capsule and detect whichever sphere is in front of the capsule. When a sphere is in front of the capsule, I want the capsule to move towards that sphere. So that's going to require two new tasks. And the first task will be called within sight. This is a condition task that will check to see if any objects are within sight of the current object. The other task that I want to create is a move towards task. And this is an action task that will do the actual moving towards whatever object is within sight. So let's open that up in our editor. And we'll get rid of a lot of this mono behavior code because we don't need it. So the first thing that we need to do is use the behavior designer runtime task namespace. And this will allow us to derive from the action class for move towards. And then let's copy that and let's derive it from the conditional task for the within sight task. And now when we go back to behavior designer, we'll be able to see within this task list, it will update with move towards and task. Actually, there was just an error. I, I didn't change the name. All right, there we go. Now it should update. So there we go. Here's the move towards, and then here's within sight. So let's go ahead and create the behavior tree right now, since we're already here. So I want to click on the capsule, add a behavior tree component, and I'm going to first add a sequence task, and then I'm going to add the within sight task, and then the move towards task. So that what this is going to do is, if there is an object within sight, within sight will return success and move towards move towards, or it will change to move towards. If an object is not within sight, then it will return failure. And we want the tree to restart when it returns failure. So let's restart when it's complete. Now we can actually start writing the tasks. So let's go back to move or within sight. And this requires four different variables. Three are public, one is private. The, pri the public variables are the field of view angle, which is basically how big of an angle the capsule can see to detect any other object. The target tag, this will be, this will help us get the list of possible or, or possible or objects that we can move towards. This shared transform target variable will be set once we actually find an object that is within sight. This shared transform variable will be used then by the move towards task, and that's what the task will actually be moving towards. It's giving us an error because we need to include the behavior designer runtime namespace. This private variable is a list of all the different possible targets, and this will be filled in by the target tag. So this will make more sense in a second when I show you this. The first thing that we're going to override is this on awake function. And this is very similar to the model behavior awake function. And it's just called once before the task is executed. So the first thing that we want to do is bring that code over. And so let's take a look at it. So first thing that we do is we find all the game objects with the tag of target tag. And then once we found all those game objects, we both basically want to just cache the transforms. And we'll do that by creating a new array and then looping through that array and caching the transform. The next thing that we want to do is override the onUpdate function. 
And what this is going to do is loop through all those cache transforms and determine if any of those transforms are within sight with the field of view angle that we've set. If there is a transform that is within sight, then it will, this within sight function will return true and we will set the target value. Again, this target value will then be used by the move towards task. Since we found an object within sight, we want to return success. If we did not find an object within sight, we will return failure. The last thing that we want to do is fill in this within sight function. And what this has done is basically getting a direction vector between the target transform and our current transform. This is the transform of whatever game object is using the behavior tree. So in this case, it's the capsules transform. Now, unlike model behavior transform, we don't need to cache this one because behavior designer will automatically cache it for you. So we, we are using a cached version with this, so it is efficient. The next thing that we want to do is compare the angle between the direction vector and the forward direction of the current transform. If that angle is less than the field of view angle, then the object is within sight and we can return success right here. So that's all it takes for the within sight task. If we go ahead and click on the capsule again and look at some of its properties within Behavior Designer, you can see that we have to set the three public properties. Let's set a field of view angle of 45 degrees and this target tag will be the same tag that we assigned these spheres to, and I assigned it to a tag of target. So all the spheres have the same tag. So if we go back to within sight, we'll name it target. And then the last thing that we need to do is create a new variable, and we'll call it target as well, since everything seems to be target, and it is of type transform. And then within the inspector, we will assign that variable. So again, if we look at the code for the task again, that variable that we just assigned will be assigned right here. Now, let's go ahead and move to the move towards task. This one's a little bit simpler, and it just requires two different public variables. Again, well, this will determine how fast we're moving, the speed, and then this is that same target variable that we had set earlier. So we need to include the behavior designer runtime namespace. And then that's basically it in terms of variables. We can then go ahead and override the on update function. First thing on update's doing is checking to see if the current transform minus the target transform is the square magnitude between those two is less than 0.1. If it is, then we are close and we have arrived at the target, and so we can return success. If it is not close, then we want to continue moving towards the target from our current position to the target position with a speed of speed. We then want to assign that value to our transforms position. Since we haven't arrived yet, we want to return the status of running. That's all move towards is about. So let's go ahead and look at move towards within behavior designer because we have some variables to assign. So let's set a speed of 10. And then we want to use that same variable that we created within behavior designer again so that we can share the information between within site and move towards. So within site, we'll, we'll assign whatever object is within site to this target variable. And then move towards will use this target variable to actually move towards that object. So if I hit play, it should work, and I expect the capsule to see this object in front of it and then start moving towards it at the speed of 10. So there we go. Now it's checking to see, well, I guess after it's arrived, it's checking to see if any object is within sight of it again, since it's basically looking the wrong direction. There is isn't going to be no object with inside of it. It looks like it is seeing one when it's like right at, on the same position, but that's, I mean, it, it's basically done now. Let's make it a little bit more interesting. And within the move towards, let's have it actually look at the position that it's going towards.
So now we should see that arrow start to move. If I go ahead and hit play, we'll be able to see him actually looking at the target. And eventually, once he finds it, he will then go, well, his behavior tree restarts and it gets back within the within sight node. And eventually, it finds a different object that's within sight. And it's just going to keep doing this until I hit stop. So hopefully this gives a good introduction to how you create tasks in Behavior Designer and how you can use variables to help make communicating between those tasks a lot easier.